Hi, welcome to A Chef Called Rhonda. I'm Rhonda and this is my kitchen. And today we're making tiramisu, one of the world's most famous dessert. It's considered modern as well. Tiramisu literally means pick me up. Tiramisu originates from Treviso, Italy. Quite a story behind tiramisu and the origination. It said that this dessert was invented by a very clever matrice of a house of pleasure in the center of Treviso. The Soraya, who ran the premises, developed this aphrodisiac dessert, tiramisu, to offer to her customers at the end of an evening in order to reinvigorate them and solve the problems with their conjugal duties upon returning to their wives. Now, can you believe that? Over the centuries, a veil of popular prudery hid the true origins of tiramisu. In fact, it's not even mentioned in books until the late 1980s. Today, ladies over the age of 80 and plus, our grandmothers and great-grandmothers, tell us of the skill and passion that they put into the preparation of this dessert for their family and friends. Oftentimes, with legends, there are various elements of truth. But one thing is for certain, tiramisu originates from Treviso in Italy, and it's one of the world's most famous desserts. Grab your trusty wooden spoon, let's all meet back in the kitchen while I teach you how to make tiramisu in four easy steps. Okay, so here we are back at the kitchen, and while I glove up, I'd like to uh, run down the ingredients for our tiramisu. Now tiramisu looks and sounds so difficult to make, but it happens to be one of the most easiest and elegant desserts to make. And it requires no baking. Let's go through the ingredients. Very simple, very minimal. We need our lady finger. Now, du duly noted here, uh, you want the traditional Italian lady fingers that say Savoyard. Now that is what the package should look like and say as well. We will use a good quality mascarpone, a good quality cocoa powder, about two and a half cups of fully cooled espresso, a teaspoon of vanilla, a tiny bit of almond extract, and two shots of a good quality di Sorono liqueur, or folks can also use Rum. Now, in addition to this, we will use 15 ounces of heavy whipping cream. And we will use an electric mixer, and that will take about two and a half minutes. Now, a couple of tips, and to write these down, make mention, jot this down. You want your bowl and your utensils to be nice and cold prior to start. Pull all these ingredients together, and we will make a traditional tiramisu, one of the world's most famous desserts, in four easy steps. Step one in the process to making the tiramisu. Before we begin, good quality ingredients is key to making the most terrific tiramisu. So think about your ingredients, think about really uh, dedicating yourself to the premium ingredients. Because they're so minimal, the ingredients, you really want to get the best of the best. So today I've chosen to use organic uh, heavy whipping cream. Using my trusty mixer, electric mixer. I have chilled my bowl sufficiently. It's nice and cold. My whipping cream uh, stood in the refrigerator very, very cold. Steel attachments and my whisk in the refrigerator so that they too could become cold. Because my grandmother did teach me a little tip. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of granulated Just sugar. Gives it a little bit better, more, more of a little bit more classic whip. And this will take about two, maybe even three minutes, depending on the variety of heavy cream that you put. And once the bubbles start to form, I take a break from the electric mixer and I go in with my whisk and, and whisk for about a minute and a half. Feel that uh, cream starting to clot, if you will. Can you see that? It's starting to balloon up. Just good. Now you want to put a lot of air into it so that it doubles in volume. Make pink tiramisu. Make pink tiramisu. Courageous, I know, but can you see how it's coming and doubling and getting nice and thick? 
and nice and frothy. Can you see that? Can you see that? That's the texture you're looking for right there, where it will stay on the back edge of my finger. Now is I'm going to put plastic over this and pop it in the refrigerator and show you step number two to our tiramisu. Super simple, super easy, super healthy and super delicious and always fun. Well, I wanted to take a moment and say hi, hi to all my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to A Chef Called Rhonda, as well as if you haven't subscribed to A Chef Called Rhonda, please would you consider doing so? It's always healthy, always delicious, and always fun. And can you see that through the plastic? How thick and fluffy. And on to step we'll two. two next is we will add in a large bowl, I have my large preparation bowl here, we will cream together a mascarpone cheese and I, I'm working with one pound of mascarpone and the secret to this is you want to be certain that the mascarpone is at room temperature because it's much much easier to work with so i have two eight ounce containers of mascarpone and again we spoke about good quality ingredients i bought a very whole organic mascarpone cheese um, for this recipe and it is at room temperature i have three quarter cup of my sugar white granulated sugar everyday sugar we'll add about a teaspoon teaspoon and a half of good quality vanilla pinch of almond extract and the almond extract helps to marry perfectly with our di sarono liquor that we have chosen to utilize in our third step for the recipe but for now my tools here of choice good quality silicone spatula a nice heavy duty whisk and of course we will be bringing in our trusty wooden spoon and this portion will be done by hand Add our mascarpone into our mixing bowl. eight ounces at a time make sure you utilize every bit uh, the reason why I use a good quality silicone spatula is certain I get every bit of the mascarpone or mascarpone okay so even from the lid once it goes down to room temperature it's much much creamier much much easier to work with one pound of good quality mascarpone see how nice and easy it just falls right into the mixing bowl and that is the desired texture that you look for important step to bring down your mascarpone to room temperature now that we have our mascarpone in our mixing bowl we're going to add our sugar so and to add about oh a teaspoon and a half of good quality vanilla and I really want that to uh, pick up the flavor and really marry nicely into the mascarpone. And for the almond extract, I'm just going to use maybe, no, oh, not even a full teaspoon hand using the spatula. And I'm creaming together the mascarpone, the vanilla, and the sugar together, just until they pull together. It smells like holiday. Oh, the smell is heavenly, right? And you can tell the mascarpone took on the color a bit of the vanilla. When you're using a good quality vanilla, as I have here, I use Mexican vanilla. Um, it does have a little tint of beiginess to it. Let's bring in a trusty wooden spoon and just clean the back edge of our silicone spatula. Again. You can see that? Super creamy. Looking for a nice velvety texture. So the tiramisu hits the palate. The idea is it just melts let's away. Let's love up. Let's go over to the refrigerator and let's grab our whipped cream. And we need to keep it nice and cold so that it stays nice and fluffy. And I'm going to bring that up close. Can you see that? Three minutes on a medium low speed using the electric mixer. And that's okay. Don't give up one trusty wooden spoonful, okay, to begin just one spoonful can you see that whipped cream look at that cream oh. into the mascarpone okay and that's just to introduce the whipped cream to the mascarpone this takes a little patience it takes a little bit of caring gently folding the whipped cream into our mascarpone the trick here is not to overfold and not to stir because we don't want to liquefy our cream we want it to stay upright and fluffy. Just turning it ever so gently. And again, 
add the rest of the whipped cream to our mascarpone. And I'm just going to fold it in very, very gent of that whipped cream into the mascarpone, this spatula. And we're going to go right through to the center. And I'll bring it up close. Let's see if I can't manipulate this. I'm going to bring my spatula through the center here, cut it in half like so, and gently fold. Yet, we're incorporating all the goodness of the mascarpone into the whipped gently cream. Gently fold. I mean, you have to pay attention here because you don't want to reliquify your cream, but yet you do not, not want to incorporate all the ingredients together either. I'm going to rewrap this and pop it back into the refrigerator while we prepare for step number Almond three. Sugar, and it smells so heavenly in this kitchen right now. I wish you could be here to smell it. I do want to bring up the final, the whipped cream and the mascarpone. Next is the third step in the process. Uh, I have two and a half cups of completely cooled espresso. Your regular ordinary espresso. What makes it non-ordinary is adding, and today I'm adding Di Sorono uh, liqueur. Again, you can add brandy, you can add rum, you can add nothing or this little extra and special something. So what I'll do is I'll just pop this open and I will stir in the liqueur with my trusty baby wooden spoon just to incorporate the liqueur with the coffee and it just gives it that extra flavor if you will and also while I'm mixing that liqueur into the espresso I want to speak a little bit about the Savoyade. Savoyade, very special cookie, it's a lady finger it's very hot in texture. Preparing, you want to keep the sugar side up and the non-sugar side down so the sugar side should stay up in Pre preparing a tiramisu. So you'll need about three packages. Each package has two savoyade, comes with two. We're going to use two packages, but three containers of the savoyade, also known as lady fingers. And I have a little bit of cocoa powder here, and we are going to start to assemble our tiramisu. First, we'll open up savoyade. And I want to bring one up nice and close so that you can actually see what they look like. If you haven't worked with them before, they're very delicate. They're almost princess-like. They're just very pretty. And they're the size of a finger, and that's why they're called lady fingers. You can see that, and it has a nice granulated sugar top, and that is the portion that will stay upright. So what I want to explain to you is this is a nine by nine square baking pan. It's the perfect size. So. You can see the operation will move as follows, and the lady finger fits so nicely in there, and that's what we'll do today. Uh, let me bring it up nice and close to you, nicely uh, into the pan. Okay, so we've incorporated the the di Sorono, or the liqueur, into the espresso right. to start the operation of putting together our tiramisu. So first off, I will take my lady finger, and I will just blip, just a little blip, dunk your lady finger into the espresso with the liqueur. Very, very gingerly because you do not want to make a soupy, soggy mess. So here we are. I have already dipped one. That's the first lady finger. You can see it's just wet and that's the bottom. And, and I will do this until both left and right sides of my nine by nine baking pan is full of our lady fingers. Lady finger takes on, over time, the lady finger will take on the flavor of the coffee with the liqueur and it will just be heavenly. Back when this recipe originated, women would utilize this recipe as a restorative for newlyweds or, or men that worked in the field all day. That's with a wink and a blink and off it up energy. The original so recipe uh, calls for whole eggs and my, the, my recipe here, I don't work with whole eggs. I just never felt comfortable in doing so. The recipe that my grandmother taught me is sans eggs. Without egg, leaving them face up, sugar side up. And make them nice and tight together until we are completely through with one layer. 
And you can utilize your hands again. Oh, and the coffee on the biscuit is just heavenly. The smell is incredible. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making my bottom layer and I'm going to bring it up nice and close. And I do take my hands and I gently press the lady fingers. Again, we're not drenching them. That's our first layer of the lady fingers dipped in our espresso with the liqueur. Front and just press, gently press. I'm going to add my first layer of that whipped cream. I'm going to take about half the mixture here because we'll be making, this is a two layer recipe and I'm going to take half and don't worry what it looks like now because we will clean it up later. And you can see that I just placed the whipped cream right up onto the lady right here and I'm going to work corner to corner, working corner to corner like so, just pulling it nicely, corner to corner, each corner. So the idea here again is to make sure that each lady finger gets a dollop of that filling right over the top. You really shouldn't see any holes. Uh, you can use your finger there to clean the back edge of that spatula. And if you have to add a little bit and say thank you to all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to a chef called Rhonda, please would you consider doing so? It's always healthy, always delicious, and oh, always fun. Okay, so that's our first layer of the filling over our lady fingers. Time to add our cocoa powder into our, and I'm using, again, I'm using a good quality organic cocoa powder side and bring it up nice and close. And I want to show you the mess that it can make. You can see how the cocoa powder looks right on top of that filling. Now we will start that process yet again. We'll dip the lady finger and place it on top. And here you can add a little bit of force, not place it right on top. And I'm going to go through this process same way Okay, I'm going to show you the process as we're moving forward. Can you see that? How it's coming? So fun, so easy. It's four steps. There's no stove. There's no baking. It's perfect. Perfect. And you can't go wrong. And it stays up to five days in the refrigerator. Perfectly. Add that final layer. So we'll have two beautiful layers. This is our final layer of our filling. And we want to make sure that we get every bit, go corner to corner, corner to corner, pull with that spatula. And the cocoa powder is so forgiving at the end, actually. Okay, so there we are. And final installment of our uh, filling mixture. Utilizing my spatula, just going to put a nice edge. If you haven't made tiramisu before, this should put all your worries to rest all of them because it's super easy, super healthy, super fun, super easy. Now that we have our filling on the top layer there, you can see, you can see how nicely we sprinkle our remaining cocoa right across the top. And this gives it that beautiful, this cocoa powder on the top is very, very forgiving. Perfectly forgiving. Take my mop peanut. I'm just going to take two fingers and go right across the top of the square and remove any remnants of cocoa powder and creams and go back around and just make a nice edge just enough to clean up the outer portion product. can you see it i wish you could smell it look at that and that's what it looks like super easy super simple to make that's yeah. it finito what I will do now is I will deglove and I will place a piece of plastic flavor of tiramisu. We must, we must keep this refrigerated for no less than 24 hours. So what does that mean? That means I'll meet you back in the kitchen. And there we are. Our tiramisu is perfectly wrapped and ready for our 24 hour refrigeration process. That step is not to be missed. So don't they say? Anything good is worth waiting for? Well, we're waiting 24 hours here. So I will see you tomorrow afternoon. Until then, ciao, 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 ciao. Okay, 24 hours has passed and it's time to check on our tiramisu. Taking a peek and yep, it looks well set.
it looks good to go. We'll remove it from the refrigerator. I'll set it on the counter and generally I like to peel the uh, plastic wrap ever so gingerly away from the tiramisu. Uh, A, the more gingerly uh, removed, it adds a bit of texture uh, to the tiramisu. Um, it gives it a nice kind of art deco look and feel, if you will. So there we are. That is our 24-hour post-made tiramisu. Now it's time to take that moment of truth and cut a big 3x3 three three inch square and take that initial taste test. Here we go. I want to bring it up nice and close after I cut it so you can see the texture. So bringing it in the depth of goodness, we have cut a three by three inch square. Oh, this is such a guilty pleasure, honestly. Before we give it a nice big bite, I want to bring the actual slice up nice and close. Cocoa powder on top and in the center, and our nice masterful whipped cream with the mascarpone. You can see that it's just enough of a pick me up. Tetamasu literally means pick me up or cheer me up. After a wonderful classic meal, tiramisu is just what the chef ordered with a nice hot cup of espresso. It's time to dig in now and let's get every single bit, every little layer, so we can take a nice big... Oh my god. It's so light. It's so airy. And we whipped and we whipped that cream. Really, really, really tastes heavenly. And just the hint of espresso. Oh, it's perfect. Folks, I want to take a moment and say many thanks for subscribing to a chef called Rhonda. It's always healthy, it's always delicious, and it's always fun. And sometimes it's even a guilty pleasure. I really enjoyed showing you how to make tiramisu. From my kitchen to yours, until we meet again, bravo, bravissimo, dolce vita, tiramisu, literally, cheer me up, pick me up, salute. Don't forget to subscribe to A Chef Called Rhonda if you haven't done so. Please consider doing so. If you enjoyed today's recipe, hit that like button. It's always healthy, always delicious, and always fun. Until we meet again, chin down. Bravo, perfecto, arrivederci. Bye, bye, bye. Oh, mangia, dolce, perfecto.